Hey Bayek, it's me Ian. and in today's video I'm looking at this. This is the Red Riding Trilogy from 2009, 1974, 1980 and 1983. Um, and before I go on I'd just like to thank Tony um, for sending me this. Um, it is well, it's an amazing film. And also, I'm going to review the three all as one together because they link up so much that it just seems rather than doing individual reviews of each film. Okay. Um, now, it has been described as film noir or cult noir or Yorkshire noir, whatever you want. <laughs> um it's set in Yorkshire um, in 1970s and 1980s. Um, it's written by Tony Grisoni and um, is based on the novel Red Riding by David Peace. Now, 1974 is directed by Julian Gerald, who most notable feature film is, well, what I picked out was Bride's Ed Revisited from 2008. Then 1980 is directed by James Marsh, who directed The Th Theory of Everything, 2014. Um, King of Thieves, 2018, which is uh, Michael Caine, a uh, later film of his, is The Heist, based on a true story, as I remember. And then we've got 1983, which is directed by Anand Tucker. And um, Shop Girl, 2005, uh, he directed, which stars Claire Danes and um, Steve Martin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then Leap Year, 2010, and The Critic, 2023, last year. Yes, they're just notable films. Again, these directors all have a lot of TV episode experience, and they do all sorts of things. Right, so now I'm going to go through the cast, who often go um, overlap into each film, um, and some more than others. So um, the first one I've got is Sean Dooley who plays D.I. Dickie Alderman. Um, he's just in lots of TV series and episodes. Then um, we've got Jim Carter playing C.C. Uh, Harold Angus. Um, he was in Flash Gordon, 1980. Company of Wolves, oh yeah, 1984. He was in The Witches. Oh, yes, The Witches, 1990. And um, Brast Off, 1996. You may have heard of that one. Um, yeah, I mean, some great uh, films there, absolutely. And again, lots of TV series. Oh, I'm just, it's, it's down here. Oh, apparently, it's in Wonka, which just came out end of last year. Yeah, oh, amazing. But um, he apparently is well known. I've, I've never really watched this series, but in Downton Abbey, which is a massive TV phenomenon, it was. And also, um, also, you know, I think they made a couple of feature films. It could have been two or three. I don't know. I'm really up on that. But yes, he was in Downton Abbey. Eh, hey, Mike. Then we've got Robert uh, she Sheehan. Robert Sheehan playing... BJ, now Robert Sheehan was in Season of the Witch 2011. Now that has Nicolas Cage and uh, Ron Perlman in. Wow, I love them. I love, do love that film. Uh, then um, he was in um, Mortal uh, Engines 2018. I've not seen that, but good things about that one. 
Um, and oh, uh, Grow Strong, Grow Strong, which was 2000 something, which I think is kind of a disaster kind of movie. Um, again, and he's just in lots of TV things again. Another one, uh, as are a lot of these actors and actresses. Um, Ian Mercer plays Paul Rossler. He was in a film called Peter Lou, which was quite a controversial film, historical. And that was a, it's a Mike Lee film, in fact, 2018. Then we've got James Weaver playing Sergeant John Chain. Um, he was in, again, lots of TV series, all that kind of thing. Then we've got Gerald Kearns playing Leonard Cole. Um, Again, same with him. Lots of TV series. Is, um, and then we've got Cara Seymour playing Mary Cole. Uh, she was in, that's interesting, she was in American Psycho, 2000. Uh, Gangs of New York, uh, 2002. Um, adaption, 2002. 12. Adaption, 2012. Um, again, lots of TV things. Just um, oh yeah, the vo um, you've got mail. That's the Tom Hanks one. That's earlier. That's nineteen ninety nine. She's in that. Yeah, there we are. Then we've got Sean Harris who plays Sergeant uh, Rob Craven. Quite a very crucial role as well in this film. Um, he was in the um, two thousand and two. 24-hour party people. Um, I think, in fact, he played Ian Curtis in that. Um, Prometheus. Wow. 2012. What a film that is. Then he was in Mission Impossible uh, Rogue Nation, 2015. Mission Impossible Fallout, 2018. And um, The Green Knight from 2020, which, again, is pop quite a popular film. But it's a face that you might recognise then we come to perhaps the biggest star uh, that needs to be mentioned at the moment, which is Sean Bean. And he's a Yorkshire lad as well. Hey, eh? by heck, you can't say fair than that. Um, he plays, again, a villainous character, John Dawson. Uh, yes, he's great. But, I mean, you look at, wow, what an actor he is. He's appeared in all sorts of different films hollywood films and british films as well as got this massive tv uh, output as well just in all sorts but if we concentrate on films he was in golden eye the james bond film first one for ps um, brosnan 1995 he was in one with robert de niro ronin 1998 i remember that one uh and of course, it was in Lord of the Rings, the the three films, the 2001 one, the 2002 one, and the 2003. He was in that. He's also in a film that I really like, is Flight Plan 2005 with Jodie Foster. It's a really good film. He was also in The Martian 2015. And then more films. I've just picked them out. And all the TV series. Is, he's, just, he's just an amazing real actor and of course he's in Yorkshire Tea yes Yorkshire Tea he's in that advert so you can't say fair in that can you then we've got Michelle Holmes uh playing uh Sharon Douglas um she was in this film that keeps popping up as well is Rita Sue and Bob Two from 1987 um and she's in lots of tv series as then we've got wow another A-list actor James Fox. James Fox. Oh, yes, he's in this. Um, he uh, was in The Servant. Uh, he was in King Rat. The Servant, of course, in 1963. That's his debut film, and what a film that is to be in. He's in Performance, 1970. Passage to India, 1984. Uh, Remains of the Day, 1993. What an actor. Wow. He's in this. He's in it. Yes. It's wonderful to see. Um, and then we've got 
Andrew Garfield. I told you I'm really pulling him out now. Andrew Garfield, you may know that name. You should do. Um, he's a very crucial to the very first story. Uh, he plays Eddie um, Dunford, and he is well. He really gets this going. Um, fantastic performance. Um, he was in the Social Network two thousand and twenty of ten two thousand and ten. But then, of course, he's known as you know I'm going to say the Amazing Spider Man. Um, 2012 and 2014 um, he did return again of course in um, Spider-Man No Way Home 2021 uh, he was in Hacksaw Ridge wow I mean what a film that is that's 2016 um, he was in Breathe 2017 um, and also yes I've got one he was in Doctor Who, yeah, uh, from 2007, uh, 10th Doctor Story, Daleks of Manhattan, and Evolution of the Daleks 2007, yes, they're there, brilliant, he's in those, what can you say about that, <laughs> then we've got Leslie Sharp, yeah, Leslie Sharp playing um, Joan uh, Hunter, she was in Rita, Sue, and Bob, Two from 1987. Uh, she was in Priest, the ex Lawrence one, 1994. And, yeah, everybody knows this, The Full Monty from 1997. She was in that, yes. And here we go. She was in Doctor Who. An episode that is really highly regarded. Uh... Wow, it's Midnight from 2008, t uh, 10th Doctor Story. Yeah, and again, she's a familiar face on TV. Great actress. Then we've got another one, David Morrissey. Yes, he plays, again, a very important character all the way through. Um, he plays Morris Jobson. He's a real, he's one of the main detectives involved superintendent dsc oh yeah he's all that but um interesting he was in basic instinct too i don't know how it's, uh, whether that's a good thing or bad thing but he's still in it so that's from 2006 uh he was in a horror film the reaping 2007 he was in now a doctor who special yes one of those christmas specials the next doctor um that was 2008 yes he was in that and i know also he was in the walking dead for a season but he was in a lot of tv series as um yeah amazing stuff um then we've got peter mullen who, who was in um shallow grave 1994 brave art 1995 um harry potter um, the Deathly Hollows Part 1, 2010. Crucial character in this as well. Um, very much so. Um, he's, well, yeah, he, he plays, I'm just describing him as the vicar in this. Yes, very important part in this. Um, then we've got um, Maxine Peake. Yeah, Maxine Peak, a DC Helen Marshall. She was in Theory of Everything. Um, she was in Peter Lou again. That was a very historical one, two thousand and eighteen. Amazing film, absolutely amazing. Um, then we got Warren Clark playing uh, DS uh, SC Bill Malloy. Warren Clark. Clockwork Orange, 1971. Wow, yes, he was in that. Um, amazing, isn't it, to think about that. He was in Hawk the Slayer uh, from 1980. Yes. <laughs> um, Firefox, even, 1982. Wow. And lots of TV series. It's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, what a quality actor he was. Yeah. Um, really good. 
then we've got um, Daniel Mays playing Michael Microskin. Michael Skin. It was very, I know that, a crucial part to this story. Uh, he was uh, in Made in Dagenham and um, The Limehouse Golem, uh, 2000 and something. But he's known, I think, as well as a film that stands out, is 1917, released in 2019. That is considered one of the great war films. Yep, he was in that. And, yes, here we are, Doctor Who again, Night Terrors, 2011, 11th Doctor story. Yeah, we got them all here. Then, we got Mark Addy, um, who plays John Piggott. He's an important solicitor in this, in the final um, story, 1983. Uh the full Monty, yes, that's it. You you might remember him. In, he was in the full Monty, nineteen ninety seven. Also, is in Ridley Scott's Robin Hood playing Friar Tuck in two thousand and ten. Yes, oh yes, and here we are again, Doctor Who again. This time it was in the Battle of Rackenscore versus Kossos. <laughs> I probably said pronounced that wrong which was a 13th doctor story from 2018 yes well we are really knocking them out are we then finally because i could have gone more but I'll, i thought i better start with this one we have got eddie marson uh playing jack whitehead um now um he was in um Gangs of New York, 2002. He was in V for Vendetta, 2006, which is quite important films. He was in The World's End, yes, the Carnetto trilogy, the last one, 2013, which I like a lot. A lot of people really don't go as much on that. They like the other two. I like them all, but I think that was, that was good. I enjoy that last one. And then we've got Deadpool 2. He was in that. Wow, yes, we got it all, haven't we? Okay, so now um, I just want to mention the locations. We, the filming started in 2008. Um, we got locations in Bradford. Um, we got um, in Leeds various locations, and one is Seacroft Hospital, um, which was where my granddad was born in 1895. Yes, I, 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 he always talked about Seacroft and we always used to pass it by where he was actually born. I remember going up there to see it. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, anyhow, that's what that. And then there's another, um, it, there's a scene from Armley Jail, though I think it's called HMS Prison uh, Leeds now, and Armley Jail is somewhere that I used to pass by on the way to school, on the, on the bus into the town centre, and there it's like a one of these like castle fronts it's got, you know, the Victorian ones, and that's still there, I think, is there, um, like that, but I think they may have modernised it a lot, but uh, there we are. Then there was filming in... Halifax and Wakefield and Uddersfield. Hey, don't forget Uddersfield. Hey, back. Um, now, there are two. There's the, the real case of, because a lot of this is sort of fictionalised, but there are sort of elements that it doesn't actually name them, apart from one, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, we've got the real case of Stefan Cossico, who was falsely accused of the murder of an 11-year-old girl. Um, and it was proved that he was innocent. And this ties in with some of the themes of what is going on here. Um, and also there's themes with a real-life uh, John Stalker um, case, um, who was a, a Manchester chief, I think, 
assistant chief constable who raised his head against corruption and uh, in the end uh, had to leave the, the police force and he talks a lot about this corruption and that's in Manchester but the parallels with what was happening in West Yorkshire uh, are very similar and of course the other one I'm just going to mention just quickly because then we're going to go into it a little bit would be the Yorkshire Ripper uh, Peter Sutcliffe and that is really mentioned in this uh, we see Peter Sutcliffe even yeah um, so the first one 1974 is one hour 42 minutes um, it follows this news reporter um, Eddie um, Dumford who's new to doing this and um, he's also um, sort of looked after by this other reporter who's um, quite well known um, in terms of what he's doing in Yorkshire but he's also um, the police I don't think of that you know they well what what it comes to um, he he's a gay guy as well and sort of undercover hiding in that but he he has this accident an accident that happens and that just starts to add to some of the intrigue involved in the story but what it is he's investigating the murders of these missing young girls um, um he he's quite relentless as well um and he really deep digs deep into these investigations and he really discovers the corruption and the cover-ups that are going on in the police force and the links with a corrupt businessman real estate sean bean um and really very sinister role he's brilliant in this role and this then opens up in to a lot of questions about what is going on with these police corruption and how it links up with these missing girls and cover-ups and well I, it really it, it's amazing look and the look of the 70s as well when we see all this and then we go into the next one which is 1980 this one um really focuses on the yorkshire ripper inquiry because they're not getting anywhere um in 1980 they seem to have come to a standstill so we've got another policeman comes in um and he is well he's been given this brief to get things moving you know to get this investigation give it more impetus and he goes in the problem is that um as an investigator in the past he played a crucial role in investigating what actually went on right at the end of the events of 1974 which is quite crucial um it, it really isn't that therefore they don't like him he's another outsider coming in and the police are very hostile towards him really hostile and um, we get all that um it's it's quite horrific really uh what we see um and of course we we find out it that the police again have been totally incompetent but they've also tried to pin one of these murders and investigations of a girl onto the ripper and when it's discovered that he's, he didn't actually do it oh we get to see peter Sutcliffe as well when they're interviewing him um but really it's about a lot of things that are going on surrounding that and linking up with the events from uh 1974 and that's how it all beautifully comes together so that's the th and then the final one 1983 um this one um shows how one of these officers is actually starting to be played with guilt that they put an innocent man um in prison 
and um, it's the classic case of the corruption. And so we start to delve into that, and then we get this solicitor involved who does his own investigation into why these things have been happening, and he digs and digs. And in a way, he discovers like the conspiracy of what has been happening, and the conspiracy of the police covering up um, this businessman who'd been involved, a, a basically a, a paedophile ring is there amongst them. Um, it's all really shocking things, shocking, absolutely shocking. Um, and um, then we, we, I will say that the ending is dark, but it's also does kind of, um, give you a more a lift from what has happened um in terms of its conclusion it's it is depressing <laughs> i don't want to put it because it's so brilliantly done but it, there is hope at the end i think the revenge that is that happens and particularly one character um is well yeah it's it's interesting to watch what happens really but um, I, I didn't want to give too much away because I think it's like you you become so engrossed in it. I don't want to give any. There's so many twists and turns that take place, and it, 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 you know, I, I don't want to spoil all those because honestly, this is quality, quality, quality. You almost think if this was uh, like a Hollywood film, it would actually be up for awards. The acting is superb, the performance, the direction, everything about this is quality. And that cast is superb. And the way it's filmed, the way I get the atmosphere of the eras that they're filming, the 70s, you capture it very well. Um, you know, um, it it really is a, such a strong piece of work, This these three films. You know, they're so linked together. And it, it works so well. It's I just had to keep watching them. So I put one, oh, I've got to watch the next one. Um, you, you, you're you hooked on it totally. And, and the way it, it leaves enough to keep you hooked on into the next one and you're discovering a bit more information, you build up your own ideas of what it is. This is superb. There's no doubt about it. I, I, and it's grim. And it, it is also... Um, really quite um well nasty in places really it is not nice at all and that leaves you quite shocked by it the violence as well for it to, for something that was transmitted on channel four this is really quite grim in terms of the violence as well but it's superbly done and it is really highly recommended and that's it I think I'll just show you before I go. I did show you when I unboxed it. There it is. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I want to thank um, Tony again. Tony, thank you so much. Really, it's, it's, it's been great. But anyhow, I'm going off again. So... I say, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, and then um, we'll let you know when I produce these videos and um, have a look at the playlists and all that. Um, and if you like this particular video, please give it a like. It gets it out onto YouTube. More other people might enjoy it, and uh, perhaps they won't. I don't know. Um, it all costs no. You can't say fair and that, can they? Yeah, buy it, you can't. And. Um, Yes, um, if you've got any comments, please put some comments down. I love to read your comments. Hey, bye, I can do it. It's re grand. So that's it, really. I better go now. I've been going on far too long. So all I've got to say is, I'll see thee. I'll see thee again.